Oh, hey, didn't see you there. I know I've already done this joke once before, but it's a Banjo-Kazooie video. What did you expect on this platform? Still to this day, Banjo-Kazooie is one of the finest platformers ever made. I won't ramble on about it and talk your ear off explaining how. I already did that a few years ago. But yeah, I like this game. I like it a lot. Chances are you do too. And recently, a surprising amount of developments have been made in the ROM hacking community for this game. And you know how I roll by now, I love me some ROM hacks. Longtime viewers of mine will know that I've actually played a few banjo hacks in the past. Way back in late 2016 for festive ROM hacks, I played a little adventure called Snow Glow Village. At the time, this was like the only interesting banjo kazooie hack out there. But even with that in mind, this is still an enjoyable time. Nothing really groundbreaking since the original original game already had a snow level in it with Freeze Easy Peak, but it was still a great sign of things to come. Then, in my first foray into Super Mario 64 ROM hacks, I found some Banjo-inspired adventures as well. Super Banjo-Kazooie 64 fills Peach's castle with paintings that lead to the worlds from the first Banjo-Kazooie. Pretty straightforward, but super cool experiencing these worlds with an Italian plumber instead of a barren bird. In fact, there's even a newer version of this idea called Super Banjo-Kazooie 64 Re ducks. And while it is currently still just a demo, it is safe to say we are going to be seeing a whole lot more of this concept in the years to come. And I am totally on board with it. And then there was Super Banjo Tooie 64, going above and beyond that original idea by adapting ILO Hags as a proper hub world, even attempting to replicate some missions from the Source game as well, like the race against Canary Mary in Glitter Gulch Mine. God, my wrist hurts just thinking about her. Even Donkey Kong 64 got that treatment. I know we're talking about Banjo today, but I mean, have you played Donkey Kong 64? It's just a bloated Banjo experience anyway. It counts. And I mean, hey, in the SM64 ROM hack, you don't have to change into a different character when you find a collectible that's a different color, so... Arguably, the ROM hack is better. And lastly, fast forward nearly four years to late 2020's Smash ROM hack video, and we had an entire level in Banjo-Kazooie based off the temple stage from Smash Brothers Melee. By now, it's clear to see a lot of developments have been made compared to Snow Glow Village all those years ago. Finer tuned level design, a healthy use of fan service, I can never say no to that, and even some solid incentives to fully complete it and collect everything, rather than just see what's there on a surface level and move on. This is great stuff. If anyone out there is following the banjo hacking scene, you already know full well that this was developed by Kirko Mods, arguably the biggest name in this scene thus far, but we'll get to his creations later. There are plenty of other hacks to experience nowadays, and honestly, that fact alone is getting me really excited. Most of these can even be played on real hardware using an EverDrive. So many of these fan-made adventures already come off as pretty authentic. Being able to play them on a real Nintendo 64 makes that all the sweeter. So, let's do this. An entirely new world of Banjo-Kazooie games are at our fingertips, and I am very excited. And like many other retro games out there with hacking communities, leave it to the fans to give us the sequels to those original games that those original developers won't do. I mean, I mean, that's kind of true. Wait, what? Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, you know, not not what I expected at first, I'm gonna be honest. The Legend of Banjo. It's the original NES Zelda game, but with Banjo as the hero in an entirely revamped world. I, um... Hmm. So, uh, there, there's obviously not a whole lot that can be done to make this feel like a proper Banjo adventure. However, the overworld theme is now an 8-bit rendition of Spiral Mountain, so, you know, that's that's pretty cool. Kinda sounds like one of those Wisdom Tree games, to be honest. Oh no, is that? Yeah, that that's Yuka and Laylee. Kinda makes me uncomfortable, if I'm being honest. All right, going forward, we're just talking about Banjo-Kazooie. You may be wondering why no Banjo-Tooie. Well, that's because there's actually no hacks for that game, yet. But when you really think about it, isn't Banjo-Tooie just a hack of Banjo-Kazooie anyway? That's a big brain play right there. First up, we have Banjo Dreamy, the first ever full hack of Banjo Kazooie, releasing in 2018. This is how recent we're talking about here. And by full hack, I mean this is a full blown adventure containing not only a new overworld, but a total of eight playable levels. That is really ambitious. This is the world of Dreamy Depths, and throughout, you have no jiggies to collect, instead, just a handful of notes. But hey, since there are progression blocking doors that are tied to your musical note count, it works just as well. 
There are some complications that come with that, but I'll get to it. The new stages aren't all that big, but they all have clearly defined themes, as well as brand new music to go along with them, and a similar level of ability progression from bottles like in the original game. It honestly gets a bit annoying because as a result, you cannot complete any level on your first go, and the game does not warn you of this. And since we have notes that we're collecting and not jiggies, they still reset after leaving a stage, so I wasted so much time being able to get only a few of the notes on the first stage before realizing, oh, it's impossible to get all 10, and then I had to go out and then come back and then, hey, look at that. They're back. This does make completion a bit tedious, but still, considering this is the first major Banjo-Kazooie hack ever, I'm willing to forgive some of these things. It is still fun, just a bit annoying. Like Banjo-Tooie, still a great way to kick off what's to come in the years after. And actually, that is not the only hack out there to use notes as the main collectible. Banjo-Kazooie Worlds Collide goes for a very similar idea as Dreamy, but this time, the levels that you explore are all mashups between locations from both Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie. And apparently all this time, all of those places were hidden down in Bottles Underground Tunnels. Glad we're finally trying to commit to world building here. For example, one of the stages is Witchy West, which is a combination of Witchy World and Glitter Gulch Mine from Tooie. But then we also have Rich Ruin Cove, which combines Mayhem Temple from Tui with Treasure Trove Cove from Kazooie. Out of all of the stages I played in this hack, this one was probably my favorite because even the music is a mashup, blending together the themes from both of those stages fantastically. And man, we are only two hacks in so far and I am already in love with the mere concept of a Banjo-Kazooie ROM hack. This stuff is great. All right, what's next on the list here? We have uh, the Hidden Layer. Surprise, surprise, we have another full-blown original level with a new lineup of objectives to go for, and we have Jiggies to collect now as well. That's nice. We no longer have just the notes. Having the Jigsaw pieces back makes things feel a whole lot more natural. I guess by this point, it's not too surprising what we can expect with these hacks, but even still, I was pretty taken aback. This one is also very good. It's kind of hard to compare fan-made creations to the official ones that many of us grew up playing, but it is hard to deny these are simply really, really fun to explore. Especially if you did play those originals as much as I have, just dozens of times over the years. Going through these new and polished environments, it is so nice and really refreshing. At this current point in time, the hidden layer is only a demo with one complete level, but the new hub world already has so many nooks and crannies spread throughout it, this is definitely going to be one to look forward to in the future. And with the reality of the situation being Banjo-Kazooie hacking is still relatively new, there are more hacks out there that are currently unfinished that still show off a lot of potential. Here we have Banjo-Kazooie Returns. Once again, we have a new hub world, one fully realized level with a new slate of challenges, and secret doors that I really want to get into, and it gets me really upset that I can't... Mm, I want to know what's going to be inside. Arguably the biggest complaint about the Banjo-Kazooie hacking community thus far is that there's not a whole lot of originality when it comes to differentiating different ROM hacks. You put Hidden Layer and Return side by side, and you probably can't tell a difference unless you've already played them. Certainly not knocking the developers here, what we still have is awesome. A bunch of fun, fully fleshed out new Banjo-Kazooie levels. How can I possibly complain? Oh, okay, there, there is one. Banjo 3E. Very low-hanging fruit with that name, I can respect that. So, I will give this one a little bit of credit, this is the very first ever full Banjo hack to use jiggies and not just notes, so for that reason it is still notable, but man, this level design is... It's not, it's not good, can I say that? Yeah, it's not, it's not good. Most of what you explore here are just these really uninteresting locations, and you have these jiggies that are spaced so close together, they end up not being fun to collect. Cool that they're there, but at what cost, really? Some solid fan service, though. That's always nice. There's a Donkey Kong section, which is pretty cool. It's just the first stage from the arcade game, and that's, that's a lot of fun. Until it's not. Whenever I think of the earliest ROM hacks for any game, this is definitely more of what comes to mind, but hey, even still, the creator has continued to hack Banjo-Kazooie and recently released the Legend of the Crystal Jiggy. Now we got unique collectibles, original locations, some kind of new transformations. This is what I'm talking about here. It's almost unbelievable to think that this is from the same hacker. Almost expected them to make that one mediocre one and then hide in some cave, never to be seen again. Yeah, this just goes to show that character development in real life is real. Ooh, well now this logo looks familiar. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. 
Banjo Kazooie New Horizons. Yeah, move over Animal Crossing. Oh, we got dozens of cute and adorable animals and you get to live on an island with all of them and do some chores. Listen here, you got one bear, one bird, evil killer bees. That's all you need. This is such a great idea for a stage. We have a huge island to explore that looks like Animal Crossing, sounds like Animal Crossing, includes Animal Crossing themed collectibles like fossils, has plenty of specific locations based off those in Animal Crossing like the multi-branched museum, all while sticking to the traditional objective based Banjo-Kazooie gameplay. It's awesome. Sure, we may not be working with totally original designs this time around compared to the other hacks I've talked about, but this is such a good adaptation of the chore simulator as a platformer. When I saw that copy of Amiibo Festival in the sewers, that's when I knew we had something special here. Huh, interesting. So the TV in your bedroom has Balloon Fight on it. I mean, I guess that's cute. That's like a reference to the NES games you could play in the GameCube version of Animal Crossing. That's, you know, that's kind of cool. Oh... Oh my god. And when you get around to wrapping this adventure up, you get to witness a lifeless KK Slider stare into your soul as he gives you a final performance. Stare deep into his eyes. Everything will be okay. I think if anything, Banjo-Kazooie New Horizons proves that I'm just easy to please. Platforming through the world of Animal Crossing is such a cool idea, I was probably gonna like whatever was included in this hack. I mean, I've made it a secret to nobody at this point that I am a sucker for fan service, so in that regard, I am pretty biased, but hey, a good time is a good time. And there wasn't a single sea bass in sight. Thank God. Now, if only there were one specific hacker out there that basically specialized in the art of fan service. <gasps> yeah, it's no surprise you know exactly where I'm going with this. With the rise of Banjo-Kazooie ROM hacking, that allowed space for someone to come in and become THE name on the scene, and without a doubt, that honor is currently going to Mark Kirko of Kirko Mods. This dude... Damn. Like I mentioned before, we've already seen some of his works before, and they are really, really good, but that barely scratches the surface of what he's created thus far. It all started with a simple idea. Bring over bob on Battlefield from Super Mario 64 into Banjo-Kazooie, but rather than just have it be a straight port, create new side areas that build upon the established land and really expand the idea of what that battlefield can be. All the while making small tweaks to factor in how different Banjo plays compared to the Chunky Plumber Boy. Probably didn't sound like a mini town near the base of the King's Tower would make that much sense, but hey, turns out it does. Besides, the King's dead now, what's he gonna do about it? And after, without skipping a beat, Kirko went full steam ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, Banjo-Kazooie, the Jiggies of Time. The entirety of Zelda the Ocarina of Time converted to a Banjo adventure. Like, Literally the whole thing. You start off in Kokiri Forest, you make your way to the Great Deku Tree and tackle the Forest Temple inside. Then you get to run around the huge Hyrule Field, which is more fun to run around in than the actual Ocarina of Time because it's actually things to do in this one. Sneak your way to the castle from Kakariko Village. You get the idea. You even get to peek on Ganondorf playing a video game. Dude, Ganon's a gamer, that's pretty cool. Different main locations from the Source game are all treated like standalone levels in this one. 100 notes, 5 Jinjos, 10 Jiggies in each. Many of these collectibles are only obtainable after getting specific abilities that you get as you progress, very similar to getting the different items in Zelda. Mumbo's transformations are now Zelda-themed, like here I am now a bomb bag, and as one, I get to travel into that little hole that you normally have to bomb to get through from that Source game that is just really, really clever. And why not, there's even some extra a non-Zelda fan service as well, just to spice up what you're looking at from time to time. Because that's what Ocarina of Time was really missing. Diddy Kong. This is, without a doubt, the most impressive Nintendo 64 hack I have ever seen. It's not without some issues, you still lose musical notes for a level when you die, and that's really annoying, and some of the challenges do feel like a bit much at times, but overall, this is a full-fledged adventure that any Banjo or Zelda fan should check out immediately. It is so, so good. And once again, to sweeten the deal, this is not sponsored, but I really, really like this thing. You put this hack onto an EverDrive, and suddenly you can also play this on an actual N64. It may be uglier, it may run a little worse, but damn it, this is now the way to experience Ocarina of Time on the 64. There, I said it. Kirko did also create adventures based on Majora's Mask and Wind Waker, but they are a whole lot smaller. I know the idea of swimming through the entirety of the Great Sea with Banjo's swimming controls sounded just like a lovely good time, but I am sad to report that is not a thing here. When it comes to Banjo-Kazooie, Gruntilda's Mask, you are restricted to just Clock Town, but there is still a lot to do. Like, a shocking amount. Every single nook and cranny has something you can do, 
And that's really impressive. You can easily kill an hour trying to platform and collect your way through the inevitable doomsday. And you don't have to worry about a three day time limit. That's really nice. But eventually you do get access to a panel that you can jump on to access the final boss fight. Really cool way to access the third day's patented dark and depressing sense of doom. Now I can finally experience that in Banjo, finally. I did enjoy my time with Gruntilda's Mask, but I think I would say I liked Banjo-Kazooie the Bear Waker even more. Once again, we are restricted to just one location, this time Outset Island, but once again, there's also a ton of things to do. Like, shockingly so, every single inch of this island has something you can do or collect, it's awesome. I know, I basically said the same exact thing for both of these ROM hacks, but I mean, hey. I'm just really happy these exist, okay? Let me live. Unlike the previous two Zelda hacks though, this is a more direct transition from the source material. This island is almost note for note, no pun intended, the same exact thing as the GameCube game. But that kinda just goes to show that Zelda worlds translate pretty great to platformers. Didn't see that coming. Now hey, that just means that Banjo-Kazooie Bear of the Wild is on the horizon, and I'm very excited. It's currently not real, but someone's gonna start development on it. So I'm very excited. Banjo-Kazooie Cross Donkey Kong Country lets you run and jump through jungle hijinks, which also fits surprisingly well. Never would have guessed that two different platformers made by Rare would feel similar, but <laughs> wow, <laughs> amazing. This is a bit different than how you may remember though, because here you go down this one hole and you can find Donkey Kong just lounging. Don't think I've ever seen him so relaxed before. It's weird to see. There's Banjo-Kazooie the Night Bear Before Christmas, inspired by, yes, of course, it's obvious, that one level in Kingdom Hearts. This one is almost shocking to nobody at this point. Another roughly hour long adventure with a ton of stuff to collect across a Christmas themed snowland and a spooky Halloween town. And I was only half joking with the Kingdom Hearts bit because it actually plays the Halloween town theme from that game. And that theme is really good. So this is uh, another really, really good ROM hack. Kirko's creations are just consistently super creative and have way more thought put into them than I would have ever thought possible for Banjo-Kazooie ROM hacking years ago. Really impressive stuff, dude. I would still say the Jiggies of Time is the best ROM hack you can experience of the bunch, but if you want one that you need to keep your eyes on for the future, that easily has to go towards Banjo-Kazooie Stay at Home. You see, this adventure started development in March 2020 when... Y y you know, in this one, toilet paper is the health system. That's, that's a depressing reality for what was happening at the time. Essentially, Kirko, just deciding to be a saint, I guess, wanted to create a handful of fan service based levels for people to play through as the real world was in the process of burning down. And as time went on, the scope of this project was getting bigger and bigger. You jump into one painting, there you go, you got Womp's Fortress. Similar to the bob on Battlefield one from before, we have a full slate of jiggies and notes to collect in a once Mario exclusive stage, also featuring a dead king. Gotta stay consistent, I appreciate that. You go into another painting and you got Blue Resort from Bomberman 64? Oh my god, the fact that someone even acknowledged Bomberman 64's existence is amazing. And there's even this hidden area within the level that's based on a traditional Bomberman map. Oh, oh, I love that. You go into another painting and then hey, now we're playing Pokemon Snap. This one is handled a bit differently. You're tasked with finding specific locations where photos were taken in order to find the jigsaw pieces. That is really, really cool. There's another painting that brings you to Goldeneye 007. You got some mechanisms to activate. You got a few N64 games to find to give to some of the soldiers that just don't want to deal with the stress anymore which I can relate to. And even that part from the original where James jumped off the side of the building with the rope? Yeah, it turns out the rope wasn't long enough and now he's dead, I guess. A lot of dead characters in these hacks. There's a level based on Conker's Bad Fur Day, almost to be expected at this point. The entire hub world is here, the music is here. Of course, you got the Great Mighty Pooh section, wouldn't have it any other way, and he is also dead. Boy, y you make really good ROM hacks, but y y is everything gonna be okay? Man, you want to talk about having a love letter to fans of the Nintendo 64? This is honestly the best thing I've seen accomplished that yet. And at the time of this video, not only is this hack still being worked on with new levels still being developed, the latest tease being Yoshi's story, that is going to be really cool. But since the scope of this adventure just keeps growing and growing, the name Stay at Home will actually soon be retired. So give it some time and soon enough, Banjo-Kazooie Nostalgia 64 is going to be one of the best adventures you can experience on the 64-bit console. I have no doubt. Kirko is once again in
in my opinion, the most notable name in the Banjo-Kazooie hacking scene as of now. But, to everybody who's created these adventures for us to play through, Thank you. In all of my years of playing ROM hacks for different franchises, I am so accustomed to playing through experimental ones that come off as cool tech demos more than anything. Plenty of good ones over the years, but mostly a lot of just, let's see what this one can do. Oh, that was kind of cool. Moving on. Certainly not discrediting those, I love nearly every ROM hack I've ever experienced, but somehow, while still in its infancy, Banjo-Kazooie has created one of the most impressive and consistent hacking communities I have ever seen. This game just keeps on giving, and clearly, this is only the beginning. I kind of just wanted to shine a light on how cool the Banjo-Kazooie hacking community is as of early 2021, and how cool the future is going to be as well. Exciting stuff all around. I basically recommend everything I've played in this video, and I don't think I've ever had that for a single ROM hack episode before this. But, I mean, we all know the meme ones are coming. We can't have just a bunch of gold here, we gotta have some that are gonna make you really think about why you're even doing these things in your life in the first place. We're gonna have a Banjo-Kazooie hack where you explore the swamps from Shrek, there's gonna be a MIDI adaptation of All-Star, but for some reason the story's gonna be about tax evasion. You know it's coming. And it was good while it lasted.